not having told the people um, at the parish that this guy is a molester. I, th I think I can say honestly that if that was the criterion that had to be used, then there would have been no one assigned at that point because uh, no parish would have accepted a, a priest unless you could say that he has gone through the uh, kind of psychological uh, examination and that he's not a risk to the parish. I'm going to direct your attention to page 13 of this document, Archbishop, in the middle of it. Um, at at the fourth paragraph down and the second sentence, it reads, page 13, fourth paragraph, middle, it reads, it further suggests that there is a high likelihood <coughs> that he will continue to act out sexually, especially with adolescent males, if given the opportunity um, so this uh, expert retained uh, by the archdiocese is telling you and other officials this guy is going to continue to commit crimes against youth, right? Right. And it is also correct to say that you and the officials of the archdiocese continued him in ministry without warning the parishioners and uh, the parents of the youth that he was continuing to be at risk for offending. That's true. On August 29, 1992, I gave tentative approval to Tom Trepanier for utilizing Franklin Becker as a weekend help out at Cascade. When approval was given uh, to Tom Trempanier by uh, you and the chancellor for Becker to work uh, as a weekend priest at Cascade, uh, was any warning given to the parishioners that um, Becker had a long history of molestation? And if the archdiocese had known it, I do not know. Okay. Exhibit 327. Archbishop, this is dated July 19, 1996. It's addressed to you, Bishop Skelba. Skelba. Let's pretend there's a vowel in there. Yeah, that's what I have to do. Um, and Reverend Carol Straub from um, Liz Piasecki, uh, psychologist. Um, regarding Becker, it's marked privilege and confidential. And it states on July 17, 96, I had an extended conversation with Dr. Marlene Trashel the psychologist who is treating Franklin Becker and um, goes on to state during the course of that conversation Dr. Trassel articulated the following concerns and of those concerns I direct your attention to number two it states Father Becker now paren again on paren identifies himself as a pedophile and asks Dr. Trashel to sign a statement to that effect so that he could collect a private disability policy which he holds. Uh, do you um, remember receiving this memo? I have a vague recollec uh, recollection of it, but not very detailed. I'll direct your attention to item number four at the second page. It states Father Becker is in conflict with some adolescent boys who live next door. And she wonders 
if there hasn't been some kind of prior advances which have contributed to the present aggression against him by these boys. Um, this is current events that are being reported by Trashel to Piasecki, Piasecki to you, and Bishop Skelba. Uh, what was done with this information by the Archdiocese? I know that, that um, we worked very much with Dr. Uh, I think she called herself Traxel, and uh, uh, that she continued to monitor him constantly for years. And uh, I, I, I can't tell you exactly what we did this time with him. There's no evidence in this document or any others that I've seen that this information was brought to the police. Do you have any? It's no, I don't. The next item, number five, says she believes Father Becker may be in possession of child pornography in his home. Um, you're aware that uh, an adult abusing a, a, a teenager is a crime, correct? Yes. You're also aware that possession of child pornography is also a crime? Yes. This is an article. Um, that appeared in the New York Times, uh, June 1st, 2002. Okay. And then the second paragraph, uh, the second sentence says, you write, I know and I'm sure you do too that the church to be authentic must be a community that heals. Those were your words? Yes. Then you write, but I also know that you do too that there is no healing unless it is based on truth. Do you believe that? I do. Uh, 